Hey, I'm Andrew Malcolm from Mortgage HQ, and today we're going to talk about Bob Jones's, well, Sir Bob Jones's first property book, Jones on Property, the property game for fun and profit. And those are two key parts of the subtitle uh, because Sir Bob Jones in this book really does make property investing far more fun than it sounds uh, when you're just talking about numbers and uh, you know spreadsheets. The fun and profit part is often forgotten. So Bob Jones is a pretty famous property investor in New Zealand, but mostly in the commercial space. He owns a lot of uh, commercial office building space, uh, but he's been investing in property in New Zealand since I think the early 70s. Uh, he did really well. Inflation helped a lot. And I just want to give you a little taste uh, from the book. One of the case studies I really enjoyed. He saw a, a, a large block for sale in a major city for 225000 It was a big retail block. And over the years, the tenants had bullied uh, a rather passive landlord into paying sub, uh, you know, way below market level rents. So he saw that, um, you know, there was a deal to be had there because the existing landlord was far undercharging the market rent. And so what Sir Bob Jones very creatively did is he assessed when the majority of the leases were coming to expire in 18 months. And he said, look, I want to buy your commercial you know, retail unit block based on the price we agreed today and I'll do settlement in 18 months when the leases are all coming up. So he put $5,000 deposit on a $225,000 uh, purchase and he, he did the agreement with the vendor. Now long story short, the, uh, the tenants kind of figured out that um, the easy ride had come to an end. And just before Sir Bob was to take ownership of the properties, he started sending out rental increase notices, uh, much to the dismay of the tenants. They all kind of banded together saying, hey, what, what's it going to be? And, and Sir Bob very simply said, hey, it's going to be market level rents. And now they tried to, you know, blackball them and kind of stonewall and group together. Uh, but at the end of the day, he ended getting them pretty much all to agree to a new market level rent. But the new leases were signed at figures totaling a net of 76,000 per annum. He increased the value of the property with its land and you know, bricks and mortar value. And, and he, he also got bond money you know, from, from the tenants of $125,000. So he increased the annual rents up to 76,000, got uh, deposits of 125,000. And now the property, uh, based on you know the capex uh, was worth instead of the two hundred and twenty five thousand he paid for it, it was worth seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you've got to remember this is in nineteen uh, seventies money so that's a hell of a lot of money and especially a massive gain basically tripled the value of the property so to pay for it he raised a mortgage of four hundred and fifty thousand at nine percent interest which left him with three hundred and fifty thousand tax free cash in his pocket. An ownership of a building which after payment of the mortgage interest left almost 35,000 clear per annum. He says a middling of a fair deal. When you're looking at potentially commercial building opportunities, it's good to try and spot, you know, based on this example, something that's quite far undervalued because maybe the rental, uh, you know, what the tenants are being charged is far below what, what it should be charged. Now, Sir Bob does, he does talk a lot about the share market versus the property market. And he talks about enthusiast A versus enthusiast B. Enthusiast A would work night and day, you know, toiling away uh, to gain capital, you know, money that he would put away and invest each year. Now, if you have a goal of trying to get to $200,000 of annual passive income, and you're going to use shares to do it, if you're using a four or 5% dividend yield when you retire, there's a very, very big number you need to get to in capital invested to be able to give you that dividend. And you, reality is probably going to be putting 40, 50, 60, 70, $80,000 a year away into your shares to get to that big level. And what he's saying is that option versus somebody else who you know, mortgage yourself up to the neck and then work day and night restoring a rundown property, basically doing renovations and get the satisfaction of um, you know, not having to be, you know, Sir Bob uh, says, being raped of half of the rewards for his efforts because of the tax gatherers, um, their hands on your money. So Bob does, you can see, reference the numbers a lot in this book. Property investing very much is about understanding at least the basic numbers. And if things like yields, so net yield, gross yield, those sort of things uh, you know, don't come naturally to you, you really got to do your best to 
make sure you can do those calculations quite easily. You know, so Bob Jones, he, he, he's known for his anecdotes and his quick wit and not biting his tongue. He's, he's happy to voice uh, how he feels and thinks about things. And over the decades that have gone by, he's more loose with his tongue, that we say it like that. You know, but even in the 1970s, uh, he was happy to say that um, having a good lawyer is an extremely important part of being a successful property investor. And he doesn't have many kind words for accountants. I have met plenty of successful property investing accountants. There's also plenty that they don't really know what they're doing and you know they're, they're very, very risk averse. If you've got an extremely risk averse accountant helping you, think about how that's shaping your property investment decisions. Is it helping or not? So Bob says to treat your lawyer as you would uh, a sheep farmer. Use a friendly but firm hand, an occasional kick in the sides, but never give an inch and they'll, well, they'll have you for breakfast. Basically, you just got to have tight reins on the lawyer, set strong expectations, try and get a uh, quote and, and hold the lawyer to the quote if you're doing anything um, big. And one last point that I wanted to leave you with is so Bob really doesn't mind investing in a place that he's not from. Uh, he's familiar with Lower Hutt, Wellington markets as well as anyone because that's where he grew up. I've always found it easier to deal away from my home city, comparatively speaking. The reason for this is I'm too close to it and I can see too many of the downside factors denied me in another city where I'm a casual visitor off an airplane. Basically, he's saying when you are investing away from your hometown, then it's more about the, the key fundamentals than it is about your feelings about a property. You know, a lot of people wouldn't want to invest uh, in certain parts of Auckland because they got a tainted feeling or you know, the reputation of it is not strong. Now, Otara, for example. The thing about Otara is the yields can be extremely strong and property investing there can work out very well. I've seen plenty of our clients that have invested in Otara and done very well. And, and the same can be said to cities all around uh, the country. Those locals probably think they're rough places and they wouldn't go there, but somebody from out of town looks at the fundamentals, gets a property manager to do the hard stuff and can uh, do very well, get properties undervalued and uh, you know, late in the cycle properties that are just behind on the capital gains and they can take advantage. So I really do enjoy reading his books because it's on the cold face. He's done it, he's, he's built from scratch. This book I actually had to get off Trade Me it's it's not currently in print and you know if you even ask Sir Bob Jones now about uh, things from this book he'll say hey look a lot of it's irrelevant it's not important but the key thing here is he's done it it's not academic he's an experienced property investor and I did and do still take away key things from the book don't forget to subscribe uh, we're doing uh, more book reviews and if you've got any books that are on property investing that you want me to take a look at just leave it in the comments